Okay, so some of you have asked for another video, and I'm not sure what else I can talk about as far as Grand Seikos go, but I will talk about a few things that are kind of important, one of which, coming up, a Little Treasury Jewelers, where I purchased both of my, uh, my Grand Seiko Diver, this little puppy here, and where I purchased the Snowflake, Little Treasury Jewelers in Gambrels, Maryland, they're going to be having a watch fair. And officially, the name of it is, let me get my notes here, Time Out 2018 Watch Fair. And he's going to have a whole bunch of different watch brands and a bunch of representatives of different watch brands. He carries a lot of high-end watches at his uh, jewelry store. It's a beautiful place. And it's going to be a two-day event. It's going to be Friday the 19th and Saturday the 20th of this month, October. And I'm going to be there definitely on Friday the 18th. And I have a car show in Rockville that I usually go to that's on the 20th. And if it rains that day, I'll be at Little Treasury also on the 20th that there's a rain out on that car show. But otherwise, I'll only be there on the 18th. That's the Friday. And I plan on being there from 3 p.m. until at least 8 p.m., I think it shuts down at 8 p.m. So any of you folks that are around the area that want to stop by and say hi, it's, it's going to be a really cool event uh, to go to. So um, let's see. I had some other questions. I had somebody ask me why I only talk about Rolex and Grand Seiko, at least in my recent videos. Well, quite frankly, those are the only two watches and the Apple Watch I still own that I still own. I've sold off a lot of my other watches that I've had over the years. I typically have a two watch rotation at any given time. A watch that, that I use for heavier duty use. I always had a Rolex Date 8, 18 karat gold Date 8, and there are times when you just don't want to wear a watch like that. And so I always had a steel Rolex in rotation. And then around the year 2000 or so at Colonial Jewelers in Frederick, Maryland, I purchased an Omega Seamaster 120 quartz watch because I was having trouble keeping both of the steel, the steel Rolex and the Day Date, both of them running in rotation. There would be times when I wouldn't wear one enough or whatever and it would stop and I'd have to reset it. And I'm lazy. I don't like to have to reset my watches. That's one reason why I really like these Grand Seiko spring drive watches, and I'll get to the accuracy here in a moment. By the way, I probably ran, I probably already ran in a clip showing the accuracy update on my watches as of today. Uh, the uh, Grand Seiko uh, divers, I've had almost five months. Snowflake, this particular snowflake, two months. And so that, that accuracy clip that I rolled in is, is as of that time frame. So getting back to the, 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 role, the wa various watches over the years, I've had some other watches that I've tried out. I had the Seiko um, Shogun, SBDC007, I think. Loved that watch. I actually wore it for two years. And the only reason I upgraded that watch to the Grand Seiko Diver really is the accuracy factor, that that watch was not as accurate as I would like it had to have been, and it also ran a little bit slow, which I really don't like, because then when you reset it, you have to recalibrate the, the minute hand with the seconds and all that. It's just a cluster, you know what. Whereas if it's running a little fast, you just hack and stop the second hand, let it catch back up, and then start it again. That's an easier adjustment. But um, that 007 actually ran a little bit slow, and so I... I I eventually said, well, let me go over and visit Steve over at uh, Little Treasury Jewelers. I found out that he was an authorized dealer for Grand Seiko, which we've only had for a few years now in the U.S. I knew about Grand Seiko for a while, but they were hard to get. And I didn't want to buy something that expensive from like an overseas dealer or something. I don't mind buying like the SBDC 007 was around $900 when I bought it. I don't mind spending that kind of money buying something. I bought that from shopping in japan.net. But you know, when you get up to like $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, I want to see, touch, and feel the watch. I want to know who I'm dealing with. I want to feel comfortable with the whole situation. And so 
when I finally went over and met Steve at Little Treasury Jewelers, I, I really did like the diver. I, this was the first one I bought from him. Um, it just it just really uh, it 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 checked all the boxes. And now that that I have it and have had it for f five months or so, the accuracy is just stunning. The, this thing gains less than a second a month. I think it's I think it's within two seconds in five months. It's just absolutely ridiculous. You, well, you can look at that clip that I rolled in earlier in the video. You'll see that's after almost almost five months. So, so, so I, I upgraded to the to this uh, diver from the SBDC 007, and so that was my rotation. This diver and the 182388 date eight, and then I became kind of enamored with the snowflake. And ultimately ended up getting a snowflake. And so now my two watch rotation, for, at least for now, is the snowflake and the diver's watch. Everything else is on the sidelines. So, uh, so somebody asked me, well, what about other watch brands and so on? Like, for example, Patek Philippe, uh, uh, Oris, all these other different brands. I, I just... I, I've always liked Rolex. I've always liked the design of, of Rolexes. And these particular models of Grand Seiko's have a lot of the benefits of the Rolex and then some. And so, for example, I, m one of my first watches was a Datejust. And the Snowflake is very much like a Datejust. Now they have the Datejust 41, I think, which is a bigger watch, which this is 41 millimeters. So, it's a very clean design, very comfortable on wrist, very comfortable bracelet, has all the attributes really of, of a date just where you can wear it all the time, you can wear it with a suit, you know, whatever you want to wear it with. It, but it's more accurate, it's more durable because of the titanium. I do have a, a couple of very small scratches on this where I've dinged it and so on, but nothing like a typical stainless steel watch, which which is very easy to scratch. So it's got that advantage over the Rolex where it's got this, this, this very hard titanium alloy that is also very lightweight, very comfortable on wrist, is also less irritating to your skin because of some of the, the components that are in stainless steel. Stainless steel always kind of bothered my skin a little bit. That's why I wore the 18238 Day Date, 18 karat gold Day Date a lot. It, it didn't bother my skin. And this titanium, it's back to that where this is just very comfortable on wrist. So, so I guess I've had no real, no real need to entertain those other watches. That's the thing. If I don't find a need, I'm one of these people that if I get equipment that works, for example, I, lo I love this Sennheiser AVX wireless mic system. This is the MKE2 mic. And it works for me. And so I, I, I don't have to look at other wireless mic options. If I find something that works, that gets the job done, I'm very loyal and I, and I stick with it. And I'm not a collector. I'm not a watch collector. I, don't, I have no interest in owning eight watches. I can't wear eight watches. I can rotate two watches in a rotation fairly easily and keep them both working, especially with the spring drive, which is very efficient and easier to wind. It, it, it winds more efficiently by your movement. So it's, it's very easy for me to keep these two running. Like I said, with Rolex, I had a little bit of trouble sometimes where one would stop. Usually it would be the day date. I didn't wear it enough or whatever, and it would stop, and I have to reset it. And a lot of those other watches are ugly, downright ugly. And I might roll in a few screen grabs of some ugly watches. But like the integrated bracelets on uh, the Patek Philippe, uh, the, their sport watches, um, and like Royal Oak, uh, the, those integrated bracelets, those are just ugly. I remember back in the day when watches had integrated bracelets and we're like, oh my God, that's terrible. And it was usually the cheaper watches. So I don't understand a brand like Patek uh, going with an integrated bracelet. It's just, it's just ugly. And also if it fails, it's, it's all proprietary and, and no, that's not the way to go. So there's a lot of ugly watches out there that I just have no interest in. But anyway, I hope to see you at Steve's event on uh, the 18th, if you can make it. Um, and oh, oh, one thing I will say about other watches, if I was wearing a suit a lot, like I used to years ago, 
I'd have more interest in something like a, a Patek Philippe uh, Calatrava, is that how they pronounce it? Uh, you know, some of their dress watches. I'd, I'd have more interest in something like that if I was wearing a suit a lot. Um, a nice thin 18 karat gold, you know, dress watch. Um, but I don't dress that way that often anymore. And if I do wear a suit, I can, I can get by with the snowflake, at least for now. So, so uh, it depends on how you dress. I dress more casually these days. Uh, and I'll roll in a few clips of me working and things like that. But, but uh, so yeah, so, so for me, the watches that I've been talking about in these videos that I'm using and wearing, it's all about how well they get the job done for me, for my use case. So it may not apply to your use case. So anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, all those good things. And I hope I see you at uh, Little Treasure Jewelers on the 19th of October this month. So I'll be there from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. Hope I see you there. If you enjoy local content like this, please like, comment, and share this video. If you own a local business, please join us.